Сёр по пояс голый. So hi, I'm Dominic and welcome to Enver. In today's dub vlog, we are going to improve a lot of visuals for my game Svura, a game taking place in an apocalyptic world which was caused by an alien invasion. Yeah, I mean that's at least the plan for the game, but for now it's just a top down uh, pixel art game. I guess that's the entire game for now. <laughs> so in the last dub vlog, We did some sound design, but at the end we started to work on some game view, which was definitely not done. So, let's start off with some game juice. The entire game in general needs some more feedback. I mean like walking, hitting enemies and stuff like that aren't anything special. And this is a bad thing, so this needs to be fixed. But you may be asking, how? And I can only answer that I have exactly one idea. I know, I know, I know. You haven't expected that? <coughs> But in my entire life history, after so many days, so many hours, minutes, seconds, I finally got the ultimate solution for making my game feel good. Yeah. Okay, enough of this. Let me explain. The only thing that we really need to do is to add a lot of fancy visuals when something is happening. So for example, when the player hits an enemy, first of all a simple white flash animation is played. This looks fine, but we can do a lot better, just by simply rotating and scaling it up and down. After adding some dust particles and some blood that spreads around, and wabadoo, we got some nice feedback on hitting something. And also keep in mind that you need to walk with the camera, like using screen shake and a great movement system. I mean, at the end, it helps a lot. Since we are already improving enemies, I think it's time to also improve this. As you might notice, I started to walk on the new character sprite. Just ignore the bad animations in the background. Yeah, applying the shit to everything took some time. I'm still of the opinion that this turned out pretty good. So let me know in the comments if you have some improvements on that. And by the way, I also added some smooth camera movement. Because the old ones suck. I, I mean, just search for the mouse pointer. Oh, he's, he's facing left, no, he's looking right, why, why, what, he's facing upwards. Yeah, the camera movement feels really good, I have to say, and I'm still not sure why I hadn't added this earlier, I mean like, wow, this is so responsive. I mean, just look at his beauty, <sighs> even the enemies aren't going towards anymore. At this point, I realized that I haven't done anything against lag or whatever. So my relaxing moment got interrupted. <laughs> yeah, and I've been spawning like a hundred game objects per frame. What the? This was because I created my own particle system. <laughs> Why? After playing around with Unity's particle system, I found out that I can spawn random particles with random sprites. Yeah, to keep it short, I coded it on so-called object pooling system, which means that we are reusing already instantiated objects. This also means that we first of all have a limited amount of game objects in our scene, and we aren't actually calling Unity the instantiate method, because we all know that this method takes a lot of time to actually spawn something. And at the end of the day, we just got about 220 FPS on average, and this is fucking impressive. Of course, the game still looks the same, but it's really like, ah, I don't understand the world anymore. Now that I have some knowledge on how to make trash look good, I think it's a good idea to show the player when he can exit the room. I mean, previously you couldn't tell if you are able to go through it or not. Let me in. Let me in. And after some work, you can actually see if a room door is opened or not. 
I also added some flying leaves to the entire game world. I mean, it's a very small detail for sure, but I'd like to mention it. Not only because it looks cool, but it also makes the game feel alive. Alive. To be alive. Just live. Stop being dead. Stop, stop, stop. I get it. But do I really have to do it? So I had to redesign the main character. <sighs> it's been a great time with you. <sighs> and you may say the old one looked fine. Now he looked like Minecraft Steve. So I opened Krita and started to pixel him out. Then I went on reddit and asked for some feedback and to my delight almost everyone seemed to like the new one. And that's also a great opportunity to say that we now have some social media accounts like Instagram, Twitter and of course reddit. Don't forget to check them out but back to the video. After improving the colors and some small stuff that was officially the new player texture. Having this said, the next thing to do was to animate it. A couple of days later I got some cool sprite sheets where basically everything is animated. Not only the eyes, the hair, but also the backpack. Ah yeah, and I guess he has a backpack now because this makes more sense since he has inventory. So you might think that the next thing to do would be to put it inside the actual game. Yeah, and that's looking great. But what if you just apply this to the actual player? So that didn't go that well. So we have to separate the entire sprite into its smaller parts, like the skin, shirt, whatever. Afterwards, we have to colorize them correctly into the white tones, exactly like that, because that's how my colorizing system works. You might already heard of it back in Devlog 1, but I will re-explain it really quick. <laughs> boy. You start off with a white tuned image, which can be colorized by the built-in spread renderer component color field. That way you can colorize your image. And exactly this approach is used in my system to change the player's color using a movable slider. I'm white. I'm black. I'm yellow. I'm red. Yeah. This took me an entire week. Ah, I hope that this is the last time that I will ever do this again because this, 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 plus this. Yeah, this needs to be done 1, 2, 3, now exactly 9 times. I mean, the attack animations are still missing, but I don't want to do any of this animation stuff, so... That's it for the step log, hope you liked it. I've tried to be more entertaining this time than usual, but I hope that you enjoyed it anyways. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, see you in the next one.